Township meeting of Hamilton Township Committee meeting to order. Could we stand for the flag salute, please? <clears throat> or I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law by posting a notice of this meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building and by publication in the press of Atlantic City on January 9, 2017 and the Atlantic County Record on January 11, 2017. Mr. Gishard? Present. Mrs. Link? Here. Mr. Shanker? Here. Mr. Silva? Here. Mayor Kurtz? Here. Uh, could we observe a moment of silence for private reflection, please? And we have a guest tonight. Uh, we're going to have our legislative update from our Assemblyman Vince Mazio. Vince, can you come up? Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, tonight I, I come to you. Uh, I know the, the topic of discussion has been this, uh, the pilot bill and the percentage, what the county is getting. And uh, quite frankly, uh, since I've been in, in office for about four years now, it feels like that movie from uh, Bill Murray with Groundhog's Day. We just keep doing the same thing over and over and repeating the, the same number. But I just want to make it clear my position. You know, I, I am the primary sponsor with the pilot bill. Uh, the percentage of the, the count, I always was pretty clear that uh, I come from the municipal level where you have two entities, Atlantic City and Atlantic County. Um, they should have negotiated a deal as far as what that percentage should be. Uh, circumstances arise where you have uh, percentage in the future where you wanted to change it, say from 13.5 to 10.4. Every time you wanted to do that, you would have to go to the state and say, listen, we want to change this to this number or whatever you have. Uh, my position was pretty clear. I always thought that the, the county and the city should have uh, changed that. And that bill, when it came to the to the floor. The 13.5 percent was uh, never in the bill itself. It was in the statement if the county pursues more services, they could be paid up to 13.5 percent. And the last four years uh, in what the county was paid from the city was 9.01, 10.2, 11.01, 9.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2, 11.01, 10.2,
a county tax assessor bill again. Do you want me to do that? And they all said yes. So I will pursue that, but I will be in contact with every municipality and keep you in the loop if this is something that we really want to do and get, um, get done. But, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's very, very hard sometimes to get things done because of the political ramifications, but that's what we are elected to. But this pilot bill, as you know, in the beginning was to stop the tax appeals. So if we pursue and, and this is dropped the pilot bill, then we're going to have to see exactly what happens because then the tax appeals are back in play again. So, as you know, that um, the Taj Mahal is just was just bought for about 80, 80 million, and the assessed value is on the books for 220. So, you know, I don't, you know, the numbers are very, you know, they're saying that we're, we're th that the casinos are getting all the benefit in Atlantic County. Believe me, uh, my record in trying to, I come from the municipal side. I tried to, I tried to make government smaller where I came from. So I, I'm always looking for to way to to help the taxpayers but uh, you know we were in a bad spot there and as you know things in my estimation are getting a little bit better in Atlantic City and I think if we have this long-term plan of economic development we'll see brighter days in our county and uh, believe me I'm open to any ideas from you guys and if you you have any questions um, I certainly uh, would be happy to uh, answer Vince, them you today. know um the scary thing is every Monday when we open up the classified section of the press, who, by the way, did raise the price on our newspaper, which isn't worth the price that they were getting before. <laughs> You're seeing 14 to 16 pages of foreclosure. And, and then during a week, you might see another five. The scary part of it is most of us made our budgets already. We approved them. It's history. While this still goes on, if there's going to be a lawsuit, we got to pay our attorney to represent us, and no disrespect to him, it's going to be more legal stuff going on. I was in that original meeting, and when Mayor Gardin was there too, and he never objected to the 13.5 percent. Okay, now I still think they have problems there, and I don't think they're going to get out from under it. Not with 30 million dollars in interest payments on their debt. The scary thing about it is most of the municipalities are tired of hearing it. And I'm sure you get questions like that. We're not mad at you or anybody else, but we're tired of seeing all the money go to Central and North Jersey. When all they did was tout that the casinos were good for New Jersey so that they could get more money north, and none of it ever really got put down in our communities. And, and that's the upset about it, okay, because most of us manage our budgets very well. And we, we try to keep it on an even plane. The scary thing is we're going to lose more homes now because a lot of people can't afford them anymore. The taxes are going to drive them out. So whether they pay rents or whether they pay a mortgage, they're going to feel it. Now, as far as Atlantic City, to me it seems like the same old rhetoric, the same that I hear all the time. In fact, I like to turn it off because, look, all the money that went through that town, they could have paved the streets in gold if they utilized it the correct way. And you know that. You said it before. You came from the municipal level. You struggled with the budgets like we all did over the years. Mm -hmm. And you understand them. Yes. At the state level, you're a handful of people there, okay, who maybe could make a difference, but it's not enough to really make a difference, okay? That's the scary part about it. And it doesn't come down to D or R. It comes down to representing the public, the residents, and, and, and their best interest all the time. That's why many of us are concerned now. It's really a frightening thing, okay? We don't know what's going to happen. So if we're going to get hit for more money, because the other part of it now is, you know, the school situation. Hmm? Yep. The school so. funding formula has to be addressed. And, you know, if you look at the county budget, when we started here 10 years ago, it was $191 million. Our budget has been consistent all across for the last nine years, and consistency breeds success. Their budget's over $200 million. They've got to start looking at things in the county, okay? And I'm not trying to tell them what to do. They wouldn't listen to me anyhow, all right? Nor do you at that point, okay? Because they're going to do what they want. But you have to start thinking about the taxpayers because the only principal source of revenue we have is what? Taxes. And when that goes down the tube, how do we survive? Hmm? Correct. And uh, I'm just, 
you know, again, I, the, the pilot bill, there is, there is some things that have to be worked out with it. And I just, you touched on it. I don't think it's the, uh, the reason why everything's the way it is. And this is just a bill that, that actually was supposed to stabilize the property, the property taxes in Atlantic City so people would start investing in Atlantic County. And to tell you the truth, we started that in November of 2014, and it didn't get, and you're looking at 2017 sure. when it was enacted because of, you know, what went on. And <clears throat> believe me, if, if everybody from the municipal level up to the state would all work together, we can make a really difference, I think. And the, 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 the problem, you know, that I see, let's, <coughs> I'm not putting blame on the county or, or anything, they do a good job. But, you know, they do have to look, the rateable basis isn't what it used to be. So you have to, you can't have the same budgets that you have in the past. It just, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, question. <coughs> in fact, per perhaps on the more positive side, um, you, you've probably seen that, uh, what is it, the, uh, what's the name of the, the casino over there? Uh, the, the Hard Rock? Who? Hard Rock? Or no, Taj? No, no, the other one. Uh, the starts with a B. Bur Bergada. 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 Yeah, Bergada. Bergada was assessed at one time at, uh, what is it, was it $1.8 billion and it recently, and half of, no, it was assessed at $900 million, I think it was. Million, some million. $800 million, and half of it was just <laughs> sold at $900 million, which would tell you that the assessed value is maybe going up. So, uh, and, and I do know, I certainly heard that the profits amongst uh, the casinos that are operating there are doing very well. Well, that's so, the... Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that's talked about in the, in the pilot bill. It's, it's about the gaming revenue. That's how much the city would get. Mm -hmm. Every year they get, it's a 2% increase, but if the gaming revenue goes over, say, $2.6 billion to, say, $2.8 billion to $3 billion, it would be $130 uh, uh, million, then it would be 140 and things of that nature. And also, the, there's other things in the bill. The IAT money, it's called Investment Alternative Tax, will go back to the city to help pay down their debt service. Um, so and if the revenues do go up, then we can benefit from it the way the bill is currently written. And, and, and it's, um, you know, that's, we have to look at Atlantic City's not at the gaming, you know, destination perhaps that it was, but we have to put things around it that will make it more um, attractive for investment. And I think it is part of the Economic Opportunity Act, which uh, spurs investment into the city, which we have a, um, a brewery company coming that's going to have 100 employees. They have, you know, the South Jersey gas. So these things are, are positive. And that's what you have to focus on moving forward. And, and believe me, um, the pilot bill right now, it takes a lot of heat, but in the, it's a 10-year bill. I think that in the future, you know, maybe if we get investments and things of that nature, it'll, it'll, it'll spur some more revenue. One more thing. Uh, I think you corrected a misconception that, that I've had, and maybe many other people have had, and that was that the original 13.5% was based on an average of uh, the past so many years. It sounds like that's not true. Uh, the average was below that, and, and more like... Yes. Hmm? The last four years, and you have to look at the bill. It was 15 when we first started, now it's 10. So. Um, if you look at the average, it's, it's, it's below that 13.4%. Uh, um, it sounded like from the figures you gave, it's quite a bit below that. It's closer to, to 10, it sounded like. Well, and the other part was the state. Now, you know, in all due respect to our governor, he did come to Atlantic City and said, you know, I'll, I'm going to give you the 13.4%, which he did make publicly, you know, the, the county. But, uh, you know, that's the beef with the governor. You know, it's not really with um, like myself or whoever has the primary sponsor. I mean, um, the, the state wanted them to do more services, which I think they, they should do, and they still can do. So that's what I mean, that we just have to work together to try to get it where we have to go. Okay. Um, I was gonna ask you a question about uh, <coughs> this article in the press, state to Atlanta County, no need for tax hike this year. Uh, according to Department of Community <coughs> Affairs Commissioner Chuck Richmond told lawmakers this week that they're getting, Atlantic County is getting about the same amount of money that they have in previous years. Is that true? It's, there's like a $2 million difference, I believe. <coughs> but under the, from 10.4 to 13, 
uh, five or whatever it is, it's a four million dollar more. It's four million dollars more that this, the county would get. So, you know, I could we could read into that whatever it is, but I, I think that the the answer is that the county could probably work on their budget to to decrease it where it's a two hundred and some million dollar budget to make it work where it wouldn't affect the taxpayers that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so let me clarify something. I, I, the, uh, I think the article was saying that uh, the county is getting as much now as it got before. Is that true or is it not true? Well, you'd have to ask the county, but my understanding is it's not that far off, really. That's what they got before. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mazio, I, uh, you know, I've been a resident of Atlantic County, uh, lived in Atlantic City all my life, and when the casinos started with resorts a long time ago, uh, it was almost like a, uh, a setup for failure in my own estimation. Uh, I mean, uh, the casinos drove the family element right out of Atlantic City and put all the eggs in a casino basket and uh, I have seen some things starting to change, and that's what I think it's going to take. Some of the things you described, uh, new development, but not necessarily in the casino market, uh, in other family-oriented things to go on in Atlantic City. And I think with the right guidance uh, and uh, leadership, I think they can bring this back around. So I'm hopeful about this, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to uh, getting through this uh, season, as we say. Yeah. And moving forward and trying to do the work of the people and just from the city, county, and state just all work together. And I think that's how you get things done. Wow. You know, maybe one day we won't have to say gaming revenues because the revenues won't be strictly from yeah. gaming. They'll okay. be from hotels and entertainment and other stuff. Yeah, non gaming. Uh, just a quick when the revel closed, that they, uh, some of their non gaming was like 20% of the non gaming dollars in Atlantic City. It was. I was surprised to see that, but I, I learned that. But uh, we'll see where the, the revel goes. <laughs> you know, at one time, 40,000 people were employed in that industry there. I mean, it, people never thought it would end. I mean, they looked at us as the Las Vegas of the East. Yeah. Uh, the, the casinos here, the, the 11 or 12, whatever it was, was doing more than all the casinos in Vegas. Fell asleep at the switch. They got greedy. Yeah. And it's a shame. And that's what's happened in that city. And I, and I understand what the mayor's talking about because there's other things they should be doing there. And, you know, what's, what's it going to take to get that to happen? And all the other businesses that, that were helped by that, they, they felt it. I mean, Including mine. You look what you got there. I mean, people come to town, they rip them off for parking. Okay? You got that beautiful outlet malls down there. You got uh, Bass Pro Shop. You got a lot of attractions. And... Hopefully, they're starting to do better or will do better because we need that, okay? I think the, 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 when you look at everything that has happened, and I was involved in it from day one because uh, I had a casino service industry license when I worked for uh, First National Bank, and I opened up a lot of those casinos for the bank, and I watched it come in, and it was coming in in droves, the money. And it's a shame, really, because it got squandered away. And I know you, you had nothing to do with it, but you probably watched it happen too, so like I did, you know. Yeah, it was pretty. It was a pretty special place, but I mean, it, it was a special place as you watch because I grew up in. We all grew up in it, you know. It's look for 35 years, how wonderful that was, and uh, everybody can relate to Atlantic City in some way in our county. You know, we have some peace in it, so that's why it probably hurts a little bit right now. Mm -hmm. So we have to go the other way. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate. Thanks it. for coming. Thanks for coming out. Number two, item two, early public comment. Uh, I'm sorry, in addition and deletion of late agenda items, we don't have any. So early public comment on agenda items, excluding items listed for public hearing. Mike? Uh, no one has signed up, Mayor. No one signed up. Okay, item three, uh, discussions, formal actions may be taken. A, public hearing on a five-year tax exemption slash abatement agreement between Charles and Marie Kane, block 753, lot 18. And this is a public hearing on this matter. Uh, was there anyone in the public? Do we have someone from the Kane uh, residence here? Yes, we do, right here in the front. Yeah. <coughs> Can you, just curious if you kind of shed a little light on what's going to, what, what are you doing there? We understand there's an. Uh, you need to come up to the microphone. Yeah, could you come up to the mic? <coughs> 
And just state your name for the record, that's all. Glad you're able to make it tonight. Could you state your name for the record, please? Yes, Marie Kane. And your husband's name is? Charles Kane. Would Charles, would you stand, please? Do you both swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. You may proceed. Okay. Thank you. Well, the three rooms we, we just tore down and rebuilt the same way. You know, because we had to put a new foundation and stuff in. Right. So you're availing yourself of the tax abatement, which is a good thing. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yes. Good. Mr. Mayor, I have a couple of questions I may direct on. Certainly. Go right ahead. Mom. Was the condition that existed deteriorated? Yes. Yes very. yes, very deteriorated. And the reason that you wanted to improve it was to make it better because it was deteriorated? Yes, it was rotted out and the <clears throat> foundation was falling in. And were you, did you maintain any contractors to do this work? Well, we hired somebody to put in the foundation and stuff and then we did most of the work ourselves. But you did employ someone to yes. do some of the work? Yes, yes. And where does the work stand now? Oh, it's finished. It's finished, final inspection, everything's done. That's all I have except the place on the record that this matter has been approved by the assessor. Great. If approved tonight, the assessor will go out, set a value on the improvement. Um, the, then the provisions of the ordinance would kick in to allow for the abatement. Okay, thank you, Bob. No, thank you for taking advantage of the abatement. I think that's a good thing. We have other, <coughs> uh, other businesses doing the same thing uh, in our in our historic district and uh, up up on the uh, industrial park, so uh, it's good to see a resident uh, utilizing that. And, uh, thank you. You're good luck with it. Thank you. Is there anyone else in, else in the uh, room that would like to comment on this application? Go ahead, Jim. Come on up. Yes. Um. Is this lot located in, in a historic district? It is. Yes. Okay. Um, I have a question here. <clears throat> sure, Judy. Thank you, Jim. Go ahead, Judy. Um, it's a little confusing, but I'm sure uh, Michael straightened me out or <clears throat> Bob. Um, it says uh, Article 6. Uh, this is under resolution, whereas Township Code Chapter 269, Article 6 authorizes township to grant a five-year tax abatement of $25,000 of full true value of new improvements or less if you if full true value is less than 25,000 and a five-year tax abatement of existing value by 30% of the pre-existing assessed value on certain properties within the township. I, I just want to have a little explanation as to what, what that really means. Mike? Basically, I think it's saying that they're, you're, it's based on the true value. If it's 25,000 right. or 25,000 or less than that, based on the true value for a five-year abatement. So it's based on 25, not on the 34 that they've put into it, right? Is that the correct? It's up to 25. It's up to 25, but they put 34. Up to 25,000. Up to yeah. 25,000. Yeah, but they put in 34,000 to fix it. So not all of it would be subject to the abatement then. Is that, is that the way that's interpreted? That's, uh, I'm just a little confused. I don't see the 34,000. No, they, that's what they invested. Where did you get that number from? Is that what they said they invested? Yeah, this is uh, the. Uh, um, it's on the application. It's on the application. Yeah, on yeah, the, application, the application, it yeah. says uh, that they put in thirty-five thousand. Right. So it sounds like not all of the thirty-five thousand. About thirty-five thousand. Yeah. Sounds like all of the thirty-five thousand would not be subject to the abatement. Is that the, the correct yes, interpretation of that, or? The way I understand it is. By doing this, they normally would have an added assessment <coughs> undertaken by the tax assessor. 
Right. And if the improvement exceeds that value, the, uh, the assessor goes out and does the added assessment, but reduces the added assessment by the exemption percentages each year. So it's not necessarily limited to the amount of money spent on the project. It is what it enhances the value of the overall project. That uh, is yeah, I, I do have a person that is interested in this and they said oh we spent too much money I didn't really understand what it meant I understand and I the, think if you really want a full explanation it's handled by Bill Johnson our assessor absolutely he he's the one that had this on the put on the agenda anyway mm -hmm. but if, Bill he would be able to to absolutely go over the numbers mm -hmm. and break it down as to how it would affect each individual property yeah yeah, yeah. It's, okay, very good. I'm just wondering, did he explain to the Canes how much you'll be saving with this abatement? Was that discussed? No. No. They won't know that until the assessment until Johnson does the added assessment calculation. The assessment. Yeah. Yeah. Until it's finished. Okay. Move to close the public portion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain. <coughs> B. Resolution approving the uh, granting of a five-year tax exemption and abatement to Charles and Marie Kane for improvements to existing dwelling located at block 753, lot 18. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, Rita. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Shanker. Yes. Mr. Silva. Yes. And Mayor Kurtz. Yes. All yes and carry. Great. Uh, not item four. Public hearing adoption of ordinances. A. Ordinance 1846-2017, capital ordinance providing for the purchase of emergency equipment by the Township of Hamilton in the County of Atlantic, New Jersey, and appropriating $405,000 therefore. Mike, did you? Yes, you Mayor. That a bit? This is appropriating funds that we put in as our pay to, as pay as you go program. Right. We, it's not yeah. borrowing. It's just appropriating the money out of the capital improvement fund. It was already appropriated. There. Once this is approved, then uh, then there's I think we have to wait 20 days. Then we can order the fire truck. So oh, after 20 days. I think it oh. takes 20 days okay. for the estoppel. Move to adopt ordinance 1846-2017. Second. We have a motion and a second. Rita, roll call. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, We're on 4A, right? 4A. Isn't there a public hearing required? Yeah. yeah. I thought that's what we were doing, closing the public hearing. Uh, oh, I thought we were just move closing the yeah. public move hearing. To close the public move to close portion. the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Okay. We have the motion. Yes. Motion to approve Ordinance 1846-2017. Second. second. Motion and second. Rita? Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. And Mayor Kurtz? Yes. All yes and adopted. Great. Item B, <coughs> Ordinance 1847-2017, an ordinance amending Articles <coughs> 2 and 4 of Chapter 269 regarding a five-year tax exemptions in the Industrial Business Park Zone and Historic District, and creating Article 4 regarding a five-year tax exemptions and abatements in the Tunney property area in need of rehabilitation. Mike? Um, I'll let Phil explain this. Okay, one. Phil, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Phil. At the last yep. meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, basically, uh, go back through the uh, changes for the business park, there were a couple of uh, typos, basically. It transposed some numbers, so we corrected those. The properties in the his historic rehabilitation area adds the three lots uh, on Route 40 uh, that were added by the, the committee as an amendment to the historic district plan. And, and that's strictly for the rehabilitation area designation. It does not add these lots to the historic district itself. Understood. Make, make that yeah. very clear. And then the third is the, what we've titled the Tunney area, area in need of rehabilitation, which was designated by Township Committee last August. So this uh, would extend the abatement and exemption program to those four or five lots that make up that area. Okay, any questions of Phil while we have them up here? There are many lots that are listed here I don't know why, but uh, that, as a matter of preparing the ordinance, uh, you know, rather than just seeing 
couple numbers. We want the numbers to be incorporated as part of the overall. Uh, specifically, so is there a, a specific um, items that you're inquiring about, Ms. Link? Well, the 994, it has uh, several lots. Yeah, those are all, again, the, the areas that are being changed or the ones that are being specifically changed are on block 991. Uh, taking out lot 23.02 and replacing that with lot 28. And then on block 994, um, right now it's, uh, as you read through it, it's lots 30, 31 through 45, uh, and just changing that to lots 31 through 46, and deleting lot 46.01. Uh, and again, the reason for that is both uh, Lots, again, basically it was a typo. Those are the, those two lots that are being deleted were lots for the MUA that I didn't want to put in when we des did the designation. And naturally, when you don't want to do something, that's the first thing you have a tendency to do. Mm -hmm. uh, in the um, historic district on block 733, uh, currently it reads lots 1 through 12 and then 16 through 28. And by putting the three lots, uh, 13, 14, and 15, into the into the area, it now reads as lots 1 through 28. So those are those two corrections that are being made there. Okay. Thanks, Phil. And this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the public wishes to comment on this item? Move to close the public portion. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain? Move to ordinance uh, 1848, 2017. Second. We have a motion and a second. Rita? It's 1847. Uh, 1847, 1847, 2017, 48. That's my error, sorry. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. And Mayor Kurtz? Yes. All yes and adopted. Item six, consent agenda. We're looking for a motion to uh, approve item A through item E. No, we got A. That's 5A. 5A. Yeah, 5A. We get to. I confused him. Sorry, Mayor. <coughs> yes, item 5A. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, introduction of ordinances, public hearing to be held May 15th, 2017. Ordinance number 1848-2017. An ordinance authorizing a tax agreement between Clayton Self Storage uh, at Mays Landing and the Township of Hamilton, providing for a five year exemption from taxation and payment in lieu of taxes regarding the construction project described herein. Located on block 991, uh, lot 3.01. Michael, uh, may I, Mayor? Yes, you sure can. When the gentleman that represented Clayton Storage was here at the last meeting? Yes. He mentioned that this was phase five. Yes. Now this would specifically apply to phase five. He did mention there's another phase yet. Yeah, We'd have to do it if he comes back in for phase six, right? So this only covers this phase. Thank it's you. Just the one phase. Right. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Yeah. Move to introduce. Yep. Or move I have to a question. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, under it says uh, the property is qualified for exemption from taxation for the increased property value resulting from a construction project under the terms of the township code. Uh, what are these terms? Is it something that they've already? I guess they're referring to zoning and construction code, codes. Is zoning they and have to meet all, our town, all township codes. Okay. Move to move to introduce ordinance uh, 1848 2017. Second. We have a motion and a second. Rita, roll call, please. <coughs> Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. And Mayor Kurtz? Yes. All yes and introduced. Now we have the consent agenda. Uh, uh, we motion to approve the consent agenda A through E. So moved. Second. Back. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain. Number seven, personnel. 
We're going to take these items uh, separately, but we're going to start here with A, resolution appointing uh, Mackenzie Hanskins as a part-time communications officer for the police department at the rate of $13.50 per hour, contingent upon successful completion of the background process. So moved. Second. Can I just... It's 15.30 now. I think you, you 15.30? Did I, didn't, is that what I said? 15.30. There you get a raise, that. huh? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, got a raise already. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Mr. Yep. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. And Mayor Kurtz? Yes. All yes and carried. B, resolutions appointing the following Cove staff <coughs> for the 2017 season, June 16th. Uh, through September 4th, 2017. Uh, we're going to, uh, these have hourly rates attached to them. We're going to take them one at a time under separate votes. Uh, the first one is uh, to appoint Carly Lasasso, day manager at 14.50 per hour. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Rita? Mr. Gishar? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Kurtz? Yes. All yes and carried. Uh, second, uh, to appoint Horace uh, Connolly uh, Beach Badge Checker at $9 per hour, contingent upon obtaining a CPR certification. So moved. Second. Motion second, Rita. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Shanker. Yes. Mr. Silva. Yes. Mayor Kurtz. Yes. All yes and carry. Uh, three, Daniel Hartley Beach Badge Checker at nine twenty-five per hour. So moved. Second. Roll call, Rita. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Shanker. Yes. Mr. Silva. Yes. Mayor Kurtz. Yes. All yes and carry. Four, Abigail Hawn, beach badge checker at 925 per hour. So moved. Second. Motion and a second, Rita. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Shanker. Yes. Mr. Silva. Yes. And Mayor Kurtz. Yes. All yes and carry. Number five, McKenna Labastida, <coughs> lifeguard at 1025 per hour. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Rita. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Shanker. Yes. Mr. Silva. Yes. Mayor Kurtz. Yes. All yes and carried. Item six, Andrea Seeger, lifeguard at 1025 per hour. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Rita, roll call. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Shanker. Yes. Mr. Silva. Yes. Mayor Kurtz. Yes. All yes and carried. Now, can I ask a question before we move on, Mayor? Well, please. Are we going to have all the people in place for the uh, the new plan for the Cove to be open six days a week? Yes, we should. Good. Thank you. We, uh, we don't have any other needs for hiring right now for We're still that? Still. Oh, you're accepting the applications. Okay. Good. All right. Very good. Are they still coming in? Okay, thank you. Uh, number eight, approvals. Minutes of April 17th, 2017, regular meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain. <coughs> uh, B, minutes of April 17th, 2017, executive session. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Rita, could we get a roll call? Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Shanker. Yes. Mr. Silva. Yes. And Mayor Kurtz. Yes. All yes and carry. Item C, payrolls and bills. Bill list totaling $9,107,680.30. Move to pay the bills. Second. <laughs> Motion and second. Uh, Rita. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Shanker. Yes. Mr. Silva. Yes. Mayor Kurtz. <coughs> yes. All yes and carry. Number nine, reports. Uh, administrator. Uh, nothing to add to the written report, Mayor. Okay. Solicitor. I was asked to attend and observe yes. the application at Hidden Creek with respect to the Sporting Clay Range. I did on uh, April 17th. That's why I was not here. Um, the application is still pending. It is not complete. The applicant did place a, a number of experts testimony on the record including a noise expert a planning and zoning expert uh, the person who laid out the sporting clay range as an expert um, he also called the general manager of the country club with respect to testimony <coughs> certain documents were placed in evidence showing where these locations would be 
um, certain statements were made as to the expectation of the percentage of memberships that would engage in sporting clays because it is members and their guests only. It's not open to the general public. Um, the planning board ended the meeting uh, directing the applicant's attorney to make sure that all of the experts were back for the next date because there was a lot of people in the room. Um, my role is to observe. Um, so that will resume next Monday. I believe that will be the 8th. And I think what's going to happen at that time is that the applicant's attorney will probably rest and the public or certain members of the public will be allowed to address questions through the chair of each of the respective witnesses. Are they represented by any uh, counsel? No. No. Okay. Um, but the two main issues, one is noise, and the applicant presented Mr. Norman Dotty, who was a noise expert, who presented testimony that was in compliance with the noise impact standards, which are different than audible noises that are not created by gunshots, which are impacts. Um, they seem to be concerned about the amount of lead that's going to be an issue. There was testimony with respect to the cost and unavailability of steel shot, which I suppose will be disputed. So my guess is that they will complete the hearing on the 8th and that it will go to the planning board for a vote. Now, it is a contested matter. I don't want to comment on the, the level of the proofs. That's not my role. Um, but it is a public matter. It was done in a public forum and therefore everything I have said about it is a legitimate statement, I believe, of my perceptions. But I would prefer not to answer any questions of you but we'll do so privately if you choose. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, our engineer, Kevin. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one item I wanted to touch on. You have my report. Volunteer Way opened last, uh, a little over a week ago. And uh, I have to say that it was, um, met with some confusion by some motorists that has calmed down somewhat there were some crazy things that happened in the first couple of days but uh people have gotten used to it and uh if not a little frustrated that they can't get out to the pike from the from mckee avenue so benderson has agreed to put up some additional traffic control and we think it's going to be fine um i don't know that we've ha had any reports of any accidents occurring there uh, remarkably, uh, in the first day, some of the th things that people did, there were no accidents, and I'm thankful for that. But uh, it was all a matter of perception and just getting used to the to the flow of the traffic, and uh, it's up and running. Finally, <coughs> once the cut through goes in to the shopping center, that roadway goes from Volunteer Way out to the Black Horse Pike at that new traffic signal or that new. In configuration at the driveway of the shopping center across the street right where they meet that's going to be an access point to be able to get out to the black horse pike and go west that's going to cut down on a little bit of the frustration that some of the motorists are feeling as they pull up uh, other than that as a temporary measure it's functioning in the other direction as designed it'll it's be light like years away though it appears that way yes, yes sir it does because they can't open that other stretch up to the light until the development's complete. They really can't because yeah. they'll be running across it they'll during be working construction. In the middle of construction equipment to build it, and they will not only will they ruin it, <laughs> but it'll be dangerous for them to do so yeah, because they'll have yeah. traffic cutting through the site. So they, I don't expect that to be open anytime soon until we see buildings almost complete. What's the speed limit through here? Twenty-five. It's twenty-five and thirty-five. It's twenty-five on the on the exit coming off the coming off the jug handle, but Volunteer Way itself is thirty-five further down. Have we had any feedback from the residents of that area since the opening? We had a little bit of positive and negative. Um, there was some frustration about the overall development of the shopping center and the impact on the on the residents, and then there was some concern regarding traffic. That might bleed over into the into the neighborhood 
uh, n n that has not happened with one exception. The, that exception being cars heading westbound who are sitting in front of that road close sign um, figuring out what to do. And they cut through the neighborhood to turn around. Yeah, there was a piece in the voice of the people the other day, too, if you saw it. Yeah. yeah. It, and so there's, there's a m minimal impact. It's not as if there's 100 cars a day doing this, but there's probably 20. So it's not like there's no impact, but uh, I don't think we're getting a stream of cars pulling out and, you know, pulling in the wrong way. It'll um, be interesting to judge the, um, the relief on Kate's, you know? It will be, and, and we also have some signs and traffic control in our pocket that we're, we're really hesitant to use, but it would be on McKee Avenue, uh, warning people that there's no access to the Black Horse Pike. Police Department already put up a, a message board to that effect. And sooner or later, that message will sink in. I think it's going to be a matter of time. We wanted to give it a week or two before we tried to add anything. And Benderson is going to add some things, too. So I think all in all, it's going to, we'll see a, a decrease in the confusion once people get used to it. Hmm? They're all, it's largely local traffic, so they'll figure it out. <clears throat> Any word That's on uh, when construction is going to continue? No, they, uh, they have not called us for any inspections. They have not told, notified us of any construction activities at this point. And they didn't uh, return any comment to uh, the ribbon cutting to uh, requested that someone from Benderson be there? Uh, they did. I did receive an email. I don't know if you were copied on that, Mayor, mm -hmm. from the Benderson people, Stuart Weinberg. Okay. Uh, he's the president of the company, and he said, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. We can't make it. Nobody can be there. So... You know, I'm I'm not surprised given the lack of activity. They would have been put on a spot for answering questions. Uh, would all like to see that activity resume and get this get this done and out right. of the way. That's all I've, I have. I've heard um, rumors, and they're just rumors, that they needed to get that work done because their pine lands permits were running out. Well, pine lands doesn't run out, but they did have a DOT permit. Oh, DOT that has a lifespan, and I'm sure that played a role in that and they want that you know even if they're even if they're going to delay the construction any project that I've worked on similar to that one that infrastructure work that's being done is in concert with the rest of it that's why I'm oh, concerned yeah. about yes whether they truly have the tenants that they're not talking about yeah it's out of phase for sure to do the work that they did I mean we you know we have another one not far from there on Delilah Road. Remember when Delilah Road was realigned? Yes. And there was that shopping center approved. Right. All the driveways were built. There's a signal at the end of Delilah Road that's right. a permanent flash. That shopping center was never built. But never all the, developed. Yeah. All the traffic improvements were installed. Well, that flash has been there for years. Correct. Mm. That, it's been there since the, about the mid to late 90s. I wondered why that was there. <laughs> yeah. That, no, it's, the old it's, Zabers tracked. Yeah. yeah. As, as bad as people think it looks there, just look to the left of the property at the inland estates. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's certainly the, the promise Clampetville. of a better. It's, it's <clears throat> disgusting in there. Yeah. You know? Agreed. Thank you. Are they uh, building, um, or Stuart Weinberg, are they building, uh, you know, shopping centers elsewhere? I don't know. I didn't have any interaction or any any conversation with him. He was just replying to my email, inviting the Benderson group to the to the ribbon cutting, mm -hmm. and uh, I did not have that conversation. About that. You have anything else? That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Township committee members, I'm going to go first. I actually want to back up, touch a little bit on volunteer way. Uh, we did go out and have a ribbon cutting ceremony. There was about 30 to 35 people there, some residents, township officials. Uh, it, was a, it was a nice event. It was a light rain is probably why we didn't have more people, I think. Uh, everybody that was there was very positive about uh, the project. 
uh, there were no negative comments really made. Uh, we did uh, did assure people that just in discussions afterward, I assured people that if there was anything that we needed to do further in uh, in in something to do with traffic control or additional signage, that we would monitor this situation. And uh, I'm sure the chief has men that go out there and ride that road too. We did see a speed sign out there uh, back back there. I don't know if that's part. Was that from the township? No. Chief, did you get any calls? On volunteer way. We didn't get a lot of calls. No. Good. No. Yeah, it went. It went. It went really well. And uh, the only concern really was uh, how soon is it going to open? And you can't answer questions like that. But the day it went nice, and uh, and I think that uh, it was a positive thing. People were looking forward to it. Uh, and I really want to uh, take a good look or, or give a big thank you out to our engineers, both Kevin Dixon and Steve Philippon, because they stayed even after we everyone left to just to make sure that nothing crazy happened when they took the barrels down. <laughs> and uh, he did a good job. Only one. Okay, so we did have one. <laughs> he turned but around. He turned he? around and went back up the ramp. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that wasn't me. I did that when I first came <laughs> Uh, but uh, the planning board did a great job on this, and, and we want to really, uh, really look at that because, uh, you know, when you look at the process, uh, the, a project that big, and the amount of infrastructure that have to has to be in place, which we require to work together with the applicant to make that happen, to get it to the point that you open that uh, access road, was very important. Everybody did their uh, due diligence on the application, and. Uh, <coughs> it worked out really well. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure uh, before these processes were in place years ago, you would see uh, things happen like curbing not finished, uh, sidewalks not in place, uh, other improvements that were planned but not carried out. And this is exactly why, a uh, proof of why we do it this way. So I think the uh, planning board did, a, did an excellent job and, and our staff, uh, everybody that was involved in that. Uh, but let's see how it goes from here. <laughs> A uh, question, if I might, uh, Mayor. Go ahead. Um, what are the plans for that uh, left turning lane on 322? Right now, you know, you've got the two lanes there where you can make a left turn into the shopping center. Uh, I know I had to make a U-turn, and I went down there, and obviously there's no place you can go. Um, I, and someone was in front of me, or someone came behind me to do the same thing. Are there any plans to put a, uh, a sign up or something? You're talking about in pulling, like, making a left into the driveway of the shopping center that's not yeah, there yet yeah yeah i mean you know that that's really a if you're using it as an area to turn around um you it's know. probably no harm done but it, it uh yeah yeah and, we, it, and we, it, we've put benderson on notice that they need to secure their driveways and they ought, they ought to put something up there so that people don't turn in there thinking that they can uh, go someplace I, I don't know if i don't know if it's possible for them to put a sign on the pike to prevent people from making that left turn because there's nobody there's no reason to make that left turn so right they had barrels across it there yeah yeah they had it co cordoned off oh yeah but well, i'm talking yeah. about getting into that lane in the first place off yeah. 322 you know as you come down 322 right move left into that lane thinking you can do something with it and you really can't i'll bring that up to the dot engineer as a you know per, maybe one of those at least one of those l lanes may need to be blocked one of them you know, on the Black Horse Pike in that section, people make U-turns. There's U-turns all through there. So if you have a left turn lane, you can make a U-turn from that lane. And with that added width of the driveway entrance, you can actually do that. Yeah, it probably doesn't do any harm, but... Um, but you don't need uh, two. And that, that yeah, there's the light yeah. facing the uh, shopping area that's not developed yet. It's functional. It's functional. functional. All intersections functional yeah. right now. Well, I know the other one is, but I was just wondering on this side, was it... It is. It is. Okay. DOT basically opened it up uh, at the time of the, uh, you know, about about a month ago. Kevin, can you make so if you're heading sorry. westbound on the Pike? <clears throat> can you make a left into the jug hand to get the volunteer away? No. No, you would you would go up past and come back if you wanted to get into volunteer way, um, but. No, you would not. It's not accessible with a left turn from. It's like from Colonia the, Avenue, Bob. Or if you turn into Festival Mall, and then come around again to the light, then come back. Right. Right. Where you would otherwise, you could go to Maze Landing. 
you would take a left and get back on the pike heading east. I just think the people in Eaglesmere would be creative to use that as access. To come home at night. To stay off of McKee Avenue. Absolutely. Oh, I yeah. Think it's, that, it's worth, it's, I think it's w probably worth rerouting yourself to get on. That, that was some of the comments that people made that lived there. Yes. They, were, they were so excited about being able to go shopping in, over at uh, the different places and out on 322 and get back in through Volunteer Way to their development. That was a big plus. Very yeah. easy to get home, yeah. what many people said. Now, if you're heading eastbound on the pike, can you make a right into the jug handle? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You can just turn right, turn down the turn onto the jug handle and go down Volunteer Way. Yep, stay to your right and go right on down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, I just want to continue real quick here. We uh, uh, there was a uh, the Center for Disease Control had a project uh, a new a national health <coughs> and nutrition examination survey and they chose uh, they chose our county they chose our township. Uh, as a place to carry this out and they staged it out at uh, the community college I just want to give my kudos to the college for doing a great job hosting them I had I went out there last week to see this and it was four uh, large trailers uh, you went in the first trailer but they were connected together by a hallway so you could go right through the four trailers like a big uh, a big office building and uh, you could there were labs there for taking blood there was a, uh, a booth for uh, doing a hearing uh, uh, tests for people who are hearing impaired. Uh, it, it was it was just amazing to see it set up, and it's staffed by 30 people, come from outside the area that are living and eating and whatever in our township until the first second week of June. Rather, I think it's it goes on till. It's pretty neat. Uh, the you can't it doesn't service walk-in folks. It was uh, all done pre ahead of time. Uh, the survey was conducted, and people were chosen. Uh, they were paid $125 to accommodate any uh, cost they might have in a bus or what gasoline whatever I thought that was pretty neat and they expect between three and five hundred people it's an excellent way uh, for them to showcase our community uh, to get statistics necessary for uh, uh, health and wellness programs <clears throat> and uh, it was uh, it was really nice uh, to be there I had a chance to meet the uh, person that was in charge and uh, she took me on a little bit of a tour but it was uh, neat to see that uh, had, uh, I'm not quite sure the statistic used to cho choose our township, but it was great that they came here and did this because they had a lot of other areas to choose from. But that's pretty neat, and they're still set up out there if anybody would like to see that operation. So there's no way to sign up? No, you can't sign up. You can't uh, work that out? You, can't <laughs> sign up. Yeah. you can go out and visit her. You might be able to do that. Uh, also, uh, if we could, I would let's just like to bring up uh, that Earth Day is coming up at Oakcrest on Saturday the 6th. And if we could have Lee, uh, you touch just a little bit on that for me, if you would, Ingrid. Thank you, Mayor and Committee. Um, we're just pleased this year to be uh, partnering again with Oakcrest High School and also with the MUA um, to run an event that uh, not only cleans up some streets in our community, but also provides some options for disposal of non-traditional items. We have a shredding day coming on uh, this coming Saturday. The event is from two, 10 to 2 at Oakcrest High School on Dennis Foreman Drive. And we have shredding for our residents. We have electronics recycling where people can bring their uh, used computers and cell phones and things like that. And then we also have a green fair set up in the cafeteria with some vendors. Um, we'll also be joined by Smokies, our barbecue place from downtown. That's so good. they've been coming to our meetings and uh, it's nice to, to see partnerships like that happen in the community. So I hope all our residents will come out and take advantage of that and uh, come see us. Oh, we have trees to give away too. So we're very excited about that. Well, that's great. You have any questions? Okay. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Ingrid. Uh, I guess we can go on here and uh, Art, do you have any comments? I have no comments at this time. Roger. Yeah, I do. I have several. Uh, before I start, I mean, I saw that uh, stack of papers that came out about the polling place accessibility checklist. Mm -hmm. And I know you went out and checked all of them. How did all our polling places do with uh, adhering to the requirement of meeting all the handicap accessibility requirements? Uh, the uh, Board of Elections just had a couple comments. They want us to add some updated signage for van accessibility. Um, we're working together, the clerk's office, with Public Works, and it looks like we have a donation from HAVA, Help America Vote Act, of the signage. And um, two polling places, they wanted us to 
darken the stripes, that blue paint, those polling places are both owned by our fire companies. So I, I sent a letter to their fire chiefs and asked them if they would consider doing that. So I, I haven't heard back. And that was it. There was no, no major problem. Nothing, nothing major. Nothing major. Nothing major. No, it was that quite was a list of the yeah. paperwork was yeah. on yeah going through it so thank you where was the donation from well, again it's well it's it's a help america vote act i don't know if you really should say a donation maybe a grant um it's federal money that go to purchase it goes through board of elections and um i i hurried up and put a request in so hopefully for your so van accessibility for the signs just for that day yeah. They're, they're temporary signs that we can use that day. Well, maybe if we need them in the future, we can put it in and have uh, Brett get them made for us. They're going to make our, our in-house shop is going to, the, the signs we're going to get are not going to be exactly perfect. They're not going to say the van, so our in-house signage is going to finish it. Good. So, so we yeah. got the grant as a result of your application? No. No? It's Help America Vote Act. That's the grant. All and right. they just store the stuff at Board of Elections, and it's first come, first serve, who puts in for it. So I put in a request, and they had some signs. So we have to go over and pick them up. Thank you. And an opportunity to drive up to Mitzvah to see the new Rose Quarterman sign up at the park there. And uh, Mayor, yeah. my, my compliments to Public Works for the work they did up there with the stanchions and the sign. Absolutely. It looks outstanding. You know that? It's been a long time, but, but they got it there. So. Um, we talked about many things with regard to trying to keep our community safe. And Public Works plays a large portion in, of public safety. Weymouth Road, when is the county going to pave it? That's an unsafe road. It needs paving so bad at night, you can't see some of the big holes in the road. The scary thing about it is the freeholders, they don't meet in a county seat, which is here. Now we don't get any communication. Did we know they were uh, working on Colon Avenue before the bridge? Lafayette Construction putting a pipe underneath? I, I mean, what happened to the communication linkages with the county? They, they don't seem to communicate. I mean, they were all set to pave Weymouth Road. They actually had all the staging in place. The signs were there. And now nothing. I mean, they, they're missing out on all this good weather. They could have had it paved already. And you know, regardless of what the governor did, you know what we did with Malaga Road. We just took care of it. And I think, you know, when you consider it from a public safety aspect, that's a tough one, you know? Chief, uh, can, we, can we call the chief up? Yes, uh, absolutely. I have yes. concerns. Stacy put out a memo to uh, Mr. Jacobs uh, and um, regarding about a huge problem with the potentially serious electronic monitoring violations. I mean, it was bad enough we have to deal with the bail refunction. How does this all fold in in terms of the amount of pressure it's putting on the police department now, Chief? Well, obviously, we're, we're very busy, um, and the township just seems to get busier and busier with traffic and um, everything else that's going on. One of the things with criminal justice reform and bail reform as part of that uh, was that Number one, there were going to be a lot of defendants that were going to be turned back out on the street after being apprehended. That's, that's one aspect of it. Then there was another aspect of it, which as president of the County Chiefs Association, um, I became aware of when I had meetings with the various wardens throughout the state. We all met at the, at the State Chiefs Association and discussed what was going to happen with defendants once they were incarcerated with no bail. Um, were they ever going to be given bail again because the whole premise of this was once there was determination that it was a risky enough offender to be put in jail without bail, they weren't going to be getting out. And we learned quickly that that wasn't exactly the case, that they were going to look for ways to get these offenders out that weren't at, at the highest uh, risk level. And the way they were going to do that is through the ankle bracelet program. And they have another name for it which escapes me right now. Um, right away, that sent up a warning flag for all the chiefs because the pre-trial um, section of the courts, they handle the, the bracelet program, the ankle monitoring program, and they do it through the county jails and also the sheriff's department. And we know it's a very small unit that handles that. And over time, as more and more defendants are released on the ankle bracelet, 
they're not gonna be able to keep up with that. And whenever there's a violation where they violate the perimeter of that area where they're supposed to be, somebody has to go out and check that. And that falls by statute under the New Jersey courts. It doesn't fall under the police departments or the state police. And now we got a directive from the Attorney General's office that while they didn't order us to go out and, and, and investigate these things, they're basically telling us we should be getting when these violations occur. And without getting down into the weeds with it, um, oftentimes people will go outside of that perimeter, come back in. The GPS monitors that they use, you know, without going into a lot of detail, sometimes there's issues with that. But the long and the short of it is, it's an unfunded mandate again. They want the police departments to now help pick up the slack with this when, when these things occur. Um, we're not feeling it right now, but again, as this program goes on, by the end of the year, I think we're gonna start getting calls on this sort of thing. And my response is, as a police, police chief is, that's the responsibility of the jail and the sheriff's department. If it's obviously a threat to the community at that point, we're gonna be there. That's not gonna be an issue. <clears throat> but the day-to-day -day trying to help them manage this with violations, um, we're just simply not going to participate in that. Unless the Attorney General orders us to do it, then I have no choice, of course. Now, these electronic monitoring devices, they're generally just put on what level of uh, individual? If at this point, for an adult offender to be given the, the ankle bracelet, again, pre-trial, there's also a post-sentencing part of it. That's probation. That's a whole different ballgame. But pre-trial, these are people who are high risk individuals. They would be high risk. To even have, have a no bail warrant now under this, the new criminal justice reform, um, you're, you're definitely a high risk individual, either for flight or for reoffending you know, in the community and a risk to the public. So the, these aren't your lowest level risk um, individuals. Who would you assign that to, the Detective Bureau? No, it would actually require the officers on the street. And it, it, the interesting thing is the notification goes out as either a text message or an auto dial to the, the municipality. And they're, they'll just give you an address. And they would want you to go out and respond. And most of the time, it, it, takes, it, it could take over an hour to two hours for other folks to get there to follow up on it. So we're, we would be the first responders in that instance. Well, given, given what you've been involved in in this past week or so with the police department and accidents both on the pike, uh, Bears Head Road, I mean, generally, how long does it tie up those officers? You hours. You're, you're talking a, a serious accident like that, it's hours. And the, the issue, there are a lot of issues right now with this the criminal justice reform, regardless of where you fall on it, the implementation phase of it, um, they didn't really listen to the folks out on the street, how this was gonna impact them. And they were warned about these types of things being an issue down the line, but they weren't, they weren't really addressed. Well, given what all the municipalities are facing now, what they don't need is another level of, of, of uh, demands put on the various departments that, that are overworked now to begin with. There's no question about it. But that wasn't really at the forefront of this whole, this whole situation. Has there been an effort to communicate with the uh, Assembly and the Senate uh, on the, this? The State Chiefs Association, in fact, there's a meeting this week. Um, they have a subcommittee um, along with our County Chiefs Association. Um, they're going to be approaching some legislators um, to try and get this corrected. And I do believe there is a meeting the courts are having a meeting about this issue because most of the chiefs and, and it's really hitting North Jersey right now because they're so busy but it's going to make its way down you know over time it's going to start affecting us but they're gonna to have to do something with it there's no way the police departments can can do this it's not our it's not our function well that was my point at the last meeting when I said you know state mandate state pay you know they in no way our budgets have been in they've been approved and and how do you uh, this I don't look at as an emergency request, from my, my point of view. No, this was something that was talked about. They knew it was going to happen. It could be anticipated. <coughs> so, no, there was a decision made not to address this on the front end. So that's, that's a decision they made, and you know, that's where we are right now. But again, 
if it's something serious, a threat to our community, we're going to be there. That's not an issue. But it's the other things that I think are going to be an issue that we're just not going to be able to handle. You mentioned that the state association is, is contacting uh, the state legislature. Have we done anything on the county level to contact our local legislators? I, have, I am aware that Freeholder Gatto is going to be going to a meeting uh, in the next couple of days, and I'm going to forward some information to her for that meeting that she's going to, um, which it, that's more of a general thing about bail reform, but she could also bring this issue up. And I'm sure she'd have the support of the, uh, the uh, Chiefs Association for whatever she came up with there, correct? Yeah, I think as a group they're going to, they're at least going to voice the concerns, and, and we'll see where it goes from there. Again, this, this whole criminal justice reform was a top-down program, um, <clears throat> which we all voted for in, in, on that qu question a couple of years ago. It was a ballot question that was worded suspiciously. <laughs> well, I, I think the county, through the prosecutor's office, they had a ramp up big time, didn't they? Yes, they had to hire more attorneys. They had to hire more staff they have to have people on staff 24 hours a day and that's again that's affecting the county taxpayers and i i believe it was close to a million and a half two million dollars that the initial projections were and it, it also impacts the jail it impacts jail and sheriff's department well i was concerned when i read it so i thank you and thanks mayor for letting no me problem. come up i no think we I all have a question this. would you please keep us updated on it periodically? i will good I have a question. Uh, what is the turnaround time for these people to have the cuff on and then go to trial? That, well, there's, there's strict time frames. That's the other part of criminal justice reform, which is the speedy trial aspect. And there are specific, they want to have, within 180 days, they're supposed to be ready to go to trial, but a, the, the defense can postpone that and so forth. So that part of it, is, again, they're trying to get these trials going quicker, oh, okay. which is the good part of this. You, 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 you want to try to do that. <laughs> yeah. I've got a question also, Mr. Mayor, if you don't. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> perhaps this is my imagination, but uh, you, mentioned the, you mentioned the Bears Head Road fatality. Uh, it, it seems like, and again, this may be my imagination, but it seems like a number of accidents and a number of fat fatal accidents or critical accidents is increasing. Is that... Is that true or is that not true? Um, well, in the context of the last five years, ten years, I would say no. Um, oh, there was a right. time in the late 90s, early 2000s, where we actually led, led the state. We were in the top three or four in the state, in this um, in, right here in Hamilton Township, for three or four years in a row. Uh, and that's, a lot of that also had to do with the pedestrian fatals we had in front of the woodlands. And we came up with a, pl a plan with State DOT, which was not, not an easy project, to make some changes down there. But motor vehicle accidents, pedestrian accidents, um, you know, we were, we were having 10 to 12 a year at like one those point. I show you, 50, 40. I mean, it seems like any, any now, if I'm, if I'm on uh, Babcock Road to get out onto 40, it takes five or ten minutes because the traffic just doesn't seem to stop. Mm -hmm. And as he said, too, even the pike is all the time now. So, I mean, I think we are busier from a traffic point of view. Uh, hopefully, statistically, we don't become that high up because you don't want to see anyone lose their life, but it's scary. No, we do monitor that closely. Good. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate uh, bringing us up on that, okay? Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, Mike, the other thing uh, I think you mentioned, I, I know we did post the speed limits on uh, Malaga Road. I'm anxious to see the, the double stripe line done. I mean, I think that in conjunction with the speed limit is going to have a pronounced effect and along with the monitoring sign out there and whatever patrols that uh, we can give up to have out there, it's going to take a while for people to get used to that in the lower speed limit too. So it's going to be considerable, but I, I think, because oh, a few people have called me on it, okay? And, and I think, I told them, just be patient, you know, we're getting everything done. Hopefully, do you think that could happen in the next month? Uh, Kevin's working on the quotes. Most likely. We're working on quotes right now. We estimated it to come in under the bid threshold so we can go right out to, for quotes right now. Beautiful. That'd be, Beautiful. that'd be great. That's something we really need to get done. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, uh, with the double yellow lines, will they put the, those little rumble strips or whatever so that if they go over it? That, that's not part of it now. Mm -mm. Just the striping. Well, I unless it, it keeps them from veering over, but normally if, uh, well, I guess if they were passing over, it would alert them that, you know, something's going on, so. It, it eventually it may good. be necessary to do that. I'm hearing that in the Buena Vista Township section, they don't even pay attention to the double yellow. No, I hear you. Well, anyhow, um, that's it. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, Judy. Um... I, I was happy to be at the opening of Volunteer Way. I understand that goes way back uh, to before the 2008 down uh, <coughs> down uh, trend, or whatever downturn. And uh, I know Tom Palm and Terry was involved in coming up with that uh, idea. And uh, the chairman of the planning board was my husband at that time. They were very much involved in getting that idea across to alleviate the traffic on 322. And it's amazing how long it took <clears throat> here till 2017. I believe it was started in 2004. So I was happy to be there to cut that ribbon. And that's it. Okay, Rodney. I'm surprised you didn't mention, um, Judy, uh, how that name, Volunteer Way, came about. Uh, my wife, when she heard it, she said, Volunteer Way? How did it get that name? Well, it turns out that, um, uh, as, as many of you know, the, uh, there are a number of streets in uh, Woods Landing and in Tavistock, I believe, that are named after veterans. Uh, and uh, when Tom Palminteri uh, was... Uh, making making suggestions or addressing the whole area, I think as part of the planning board, he mentioned that uh, well, maybe we should call it, uh, we recognize veterans and this would be a way of recognizing volunteers. So he mentioned volunteer way and it was never officially adopted, but people just liked the idea. So that's how it ended up being called volunteer way. Wow. Um, I had the good fortune of attending a uh, a bike ride uh, that uh, departed from the county park. Now we didn't, we had a request for a triathlon this year, which we had to turn down because of, of timing, but we did have this bike ride. And uh, I don't know how many people attended, maybe close to 100. It was uh, three loops. Uh, it, uh, they all returned to, uh, to the park. Uh, it was a very nice day and uh, good participation. Unfortunately, I, I don't know whether I saw any Maze Landing folks there, and that's uh, except aside from myself, and that's too bad because it, it is a beautiful, you really appreciate the area on, uh, on rides like that. Where do they have uh, it, Estelle Manor? No, no, right here at uh, Lake Lenape. Oh, yeah, but then they, you know, that was the other thing I said. You know, the county did all that paving on the other side of the lake into the campground. Yep, yep. Should have had the same paver get on Weymouth uh, on uh, Harding Highway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, that, that was part of the route, and we all had to come back along that, uh, oh, that is absolutely horrible. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm still shaking from that, vibrating from that road. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, My son's riding the uh, <laughs> tour for his third time. Ooh. We'll open it up to the public. Uh, Lisa, Lisa, I understand no you deaths, had something. Mm -hmm. Yes. I hope no deaths. <clears throat> I hear you. Good morning, or good afternoon. I don't even know what time it is. I've been so busy. Um, I'm here to invite you to my club. Can I hand this out? Sure. Because we need different members. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Well, thank you. Different walks of life to be able to have a career day while we have our camp. <laughs> Uh, Andre Vincent and uh, uh, Pastor Ragland and I uh, have started the Clubhouse Recreation Center. It'll be located on Main Street, um, right next to Andre's shop, the barber shop. Um, 
And these are just a glimpse of some of the programs that we're offering um, or the activities, services that we're going to be providing out of that facility. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Right. Who, who's sponsoring this? What do you mean who's sponsoring it? Well, somebody had to uh, provide the location and, and do the planning Andre for this. Andre has the building, mm -hmm. so he has that building, and everything else is being done with grants. Uh, we're going to have some fundraisers. The summer camp will be generating some of those profits. Um, we're working with the community food bank, so I've already been certified through them to be a feeding facility. We're doing the NFL flag football. They have a program right now down in um, Cape May County, I believe it is, Ocean City Sea Isle and Stone Harbor. They're gonna be helping us get something started up here. Um, we're also gonna be working with uh, Perry Mays, Coalition for a Safe Community. He's already been Atlantic City, Egg Harbor City. So we've already partnered with him to utilize some of his resources um, we're also partnering up with Exclusive out of Atlantic City. Um, they're the ones that will be teaching the dance, the drill, um, some of the other activities that the student or the kids will be involved in. Now, is this an extension from what occurred last year? Um, no, this is totally this different. This is totally different. Yes, it is. Is this, is this an organization? Does it, are you, it's a uh, nonprofit, yes. And the name of it is? Clubhouse Recreation Center. Well, this, this will not be limited to Hamilton Township folks. This will be open, Correct. I guess. This will be whoever, you know, yes, we'd like to serve our community first, but it'll be open to um, anyone from anywhere. And the overall purpose of it is? Our goal is, one, to be able to educate this, the children in our area, to <coughs> be able to keep them occupied, to give them... Um, an opportunity to see that there's other things out there other than the drugs, the drama, those types of things. Um, we also want to be like a one-stop kind of facilitation area where, um, I don't know if you've ever tried to fill out a food stamp application on your phone because most people don't have access to a computer. So we're gonna have a computer there where they can do the applications, where they'll have the paper trail. Um, to be able to apply for true page pad you know any of those <coughs> services to educate basically is what we're have you reached out to our chairman of our senior advisory uh, no not yet or Diane Fox yeah. I, I, I noticed you put seniors down there yes. in veterans I think that's uh, another good uh, basis for trying to help them too yes good is this part of a larger organization or is this it's, it's right here. Right here, right here in hometown Maze Landing. All right. This is a 501. Yes, it is. How many people are involved in, in running this? Right now, three. And you're one of them, I guess. Yes. And is the name of the 501C? Uh, yes, it is. Is the Clubhouse Recreation Center? Yes. I even put the nonprofit number on the bottom. All right, right. I had an opportunity to talk with Andre about this and Lisa, and uh, and uh, he brought the uh, nonprofit papers over uh, just to show me that it's absolutely up and running, and uh, and I uh, that that was a good thing. He he jumped through the hoops necessary to make this happen, and he's utilizing that center location between the barber shop and the uh, other uh, yes. other entity there. Uh, but obviously everything you see on this list can't be carried out there, so that's like a resource. Correct. Center. That'll be like. Um, where people can come in and say, I need help with this. Where do I go? Who do I see? Right. Um, you know, we want to reach out to the Department of Labor. We want to reach out to all these different entities. One, to get brochures so they can be displayed. So when people come in, they can see this is where I need to go. Or they, they're able to get some sort of answer rather than waiting on the phone. Is this this is not then associated with the uh, with the, the summer program that they had last year? Do you know whether that program is still going to go on? I don't believe it is. No. Okay. Are you uh, also affiliated with the um, the uh, 
football, uh, the other football league. NFL, the Mace uh, Landing League? No, not the, uh, the... Or the Knights? The Knights, yes. No, okay, because I think they they have an NFL affiliation, uh, affiliation program also. They, I believe, I don't know if they still do. I can't answer that, but I know that we do. Well, I might be coordinating with them if they do. Maybe, maybe there can be some, uh, you know, some help. Right. Right. I had an opportunity to uh, to visit the summer camp last year when it first started, and uh, it it was attended well, but it wanted it could have been a lot better, and that's what you're looking yes. for. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it was a good program. I got a chance to talk to the kids. They seemed to have a great time out there, and it uh, gave them something to do. Uh, and, uh, and I see it runs through the 5th of July through August 18th. Correct. So yes. that's a certainly enough time. We're hoping that um, right now with the coalition, I have career days and blocks set up for um, a police officer to come out, a criminologist to come out. Uh, with Blue 16, what is it, 1647, they work with computers, uh, computer science, photography. So we're going to try to have it a little bit more structured or a lot more structured this year where there's people, professionals coming out to, again, educate the kids and make it fun. And I'll tell you, I, I'll talk to you uh, on a later date also about having maybe air traffic control, having Absolutely. <coughs> pilots, on this day, having I engineers and others of that ilk. Yes, I would really appreciate that. And I'd like to commend you and Andre and whoever else is involved for taking on an effort like this. Thank it's really uh, Absolutely. fantastic. Think Thank about you. it, too, because I think initially um, uh, they're like sponges, the young people. And um, you might even want to think, you know, we have a Youth in Government Day here for the eighth graders. You can actually probably capture a session in here during that summer where they can come in and we can do a mock-up committee meeting for yes, them. Yes, I would like that. Yeah, that would be uh, great. Need <laughs> schedules, who's available when, so I can plug it in onto my calendar. Good. Sure. We wish you well. Thank yep. you. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, Thanks for coming good. out and talking to us. Uh, any else? Anyone else in the public wish to speak? Move to close the public portion. Second. <clears throat> uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain? Against? Motion uh, to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Kevin. Do we have